this is going to start a study on a series called I have found Jesus in Genesis. So look at John 5:39. It says, "Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me." This is Jesus that said this, and when he said this, all he had was the Old Testament scriptures. He said, "Search the scriptures." If he said, "Search the scriptures," he's talking about the Old Testament. Because that's all he had at the time. And he says, for in them you think you have eternal life. And there are they which testify of me. So he's saying himself that you can find him in the Old Testament. And then in John 5, 46, he says, for had you believed Moses, you would have believed me. For he wrote of me. What did Moses write? He wrote Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Are you aware that when Jesus Christ said these words that the New Testament hadn't been written yet? Jesus Christ is telling you that the Old Testament writers spoke of him. So I want to take you on a journey through Genesis and show you Jesus Christ. First off, you see Jesus as creator. If you see Genesis 1.1, it says, In the beginning, God created. Right there, you see Jesus already. If you look at Colossians 1, 15 through 18, it says, Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So it's Jesus Christ who's creator. All things were created by him and for him. Hebrews 1, 2, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, which is Jesus Christ, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. Now see this, by whom also he made the worlds. So Jesus Christ wasn't just born one day, He's always been and always will be. He is creator. In the beginning, God created. It's not just that, but the phrase, in the beginning. When Genesis 1-1 says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. What does Jesus say about himself in Revelation 1-8? He says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which is to come the Almighty. And what does he say in Colossians 1.18? And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning. Right there in Colossians, Paul calls him the beginning. And then Jesus again says it in Revelation 22.13, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And even says himself in John 8.58, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. That's because he's omnipresent. God is always present in eternity, in the past, in the present, and in the future. Jesus is omnipresent. He was here in eternity past. He's here in this present time. He'll be here in the future. He can control time like we would control the DVD. He can pause it. He can press play. He can fast forward. He can rewind. Now, next... Look at that phrase in Genesis 1 where it says, And God said, Let there be light. And then look at John 1.1, 1, 1, which says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So it says, And God said. Jesus is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. So in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said. Right there's the Word. That's Jesus Christ. And even the first few verses of Genesis shows you what took place when you went from unsaved to having Jesus Christ, who is the light, come into you. It says you were 
It says the earth was without form and void. That's you before salvation. It says darkness was in you. That's you before salvation. It says darkness was upon the face of the deep. You had darkness within you. Then it says the Spirit of God moved. That's what happened when you get saved. And then God said, let there be light. When you got saved, the light came in. John 8, 12 says, Then spake Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. That's what happened when you believe the gospel. Now look at verse 4. And God divided the light from the darkness. That's the next thing we see about Jesus is light divides. Jesus divides. Uh, he doesn't want everybody to get together. He actually pulls people apart. He's not the Hollywood Jesus who's okay with everything. It says in Luke 12, 51, Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. Jesus himself said that. John 7, 43, So there was a division among the people because of him. He caused division, not an ecumenical movement. Paul says in Galatians 4, 16, Am I therefore become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. The truth makes enemies. And then next you see in Genesis 1 and verse 20, And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life. There you have water associated with life. Just like in John 4:14, 4, where it says, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Then in John 7, 38, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Salvation is as simple as taking a drink of water. And there in Genesis 1, 20, it's associated with life. Jesus is the water of life. Then verse 26, it says, And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. So Adam, the first Adam, gets dominion before he fell. And then the last Adam, which is Jesus Christ, gets dominion in the millennium. In Revelation 1, 6, it says, And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So Jesus is the last Adam that's going to have dominion. And that's what 1 Corinthians 15, 45 calls him. It says, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last, Adam, was made a quickening spirit. And then you go on to Genesis chapter 2, and it says in verse 2, And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. So the Lord created everything in six literal days, and then rested on the seventh day. And Jesus is our rest. He is our Sabbath. As he says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. We don't have to keep the Sabbath, because the Sabbath, Jesus Christ, keeps us. It says we are kept by the power of God through faith and salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Jesus keeps me. I'm not worried about keeping the Sabbath. Paul says in Colossians 2, 16, to let, let no man judge me over the Sabbath, but the Sabbath keeps me. Now, verse 9, you see the tree of life in Genesis 2. So you see eternal life from a tree in which you freely eat. In Genesis 2, 16, you freely eat from this tree. Just like we get our eternal life from Jesus Christ who died on the tree and his salvation is free. We get eternal, free eternal life from him. First Peter 2, 24, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Galatians 3, 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Just knowing about the tree wasn't enough. You had to eat off the tree. You can know about Jesus, but you have to receive him to be saved. Now, verse 15 says, Put him into the garden to dress it and to keep it. The Lord put Adam in the garden to dress it and to keep it, just like Jesus Christ dresses and keeps the church. Then verse 21, you see, the Lord causes a deep sleep to come upon Adam. Uh, he takes one of his ribs and makes the woman. 
So Adam has to be put to sleep, a type of death, to get his bride, just like Jesus is put to death to get his bride, which is us, the church. And Jesus is also pierced in his side when he died for his bride, just like Adam. As it says in John 19, 34, And one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith there came out blood and water. So you see Adam and Eve, a type of Jesus Christ and the church. Now chapter 3 and verse 6, And God gave also unto her husband, or excuse me, verse 6, And gave also unto her husband, and he did eat. So Eve took the fruit first after she was tempted by the serpent. She was deceived, and she ate the fruit, and then she gave to her husband. 1 Timothy 2.14 says, And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So Adam wasn't deceived, the woman was. But Adam entered into the realm of sin for Eve because he loved her, just like Jesus entered it for his bride. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Then in Genesis 3.15, you have the first direct prophecy of Jesus Christ, where it says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And that's the Lord talking to the serpent, telling him that he will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And Eve's seed is Jesus Christ. And the bruising of the head is partly fulfilled at Calvary, but fully fulfilled at the second coming. Romans 16, 20 says, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. But then you can see pictures of Satan getting his head bruised through his men throughout the Bible. You have Sisera in Judges 5, 26, Abimelech in Judges 9, 53, Goliath in 1 Samuel 17, 51. Uh, Judas in Matthew 27, 5, the Antichrist in Revelation 13, 3. You see pictures of the serpent getting his head bruised all the way throughout the scriptures. And that goes along with this prophecy. But we'll continue on later with finding Jesus in Genesis.